Hey everybody and welcome back to Tanzan Motorsports. In today's video, we are going to be installing the VF engineering kit onto our M54 B30 swapped M3 shell. Before we get into the install, there's a few people that I need to shout out and I need you guys to go and follow, like, subscribe to all of their social media and YouTube channels. So first is Brett. Brett was the one who sold me the supercharger kit. He works on ZHP model E46s. Really cool stuff. He's a cool guy. Go make sure to follow him on Instagram and go subscribe to his YouTube channel. The other one is RevMatch. RevMatch is the tuner for Tenza Motorsports. They've been doing a lot of really good work and we actually already have the tune for this car and I don't even have the supercharger in yet. So we are waiting for injectors in the mail. They were supposed to be here a few days ago. So we're hoping to start the car today, but we're really just waiting to see if they show up today. I'll have the links to both of those people down in the description below. Also make sure to check out our Instagram, Tenza underscore motorsports, and the Instagram for this car, which is Nikki underscore nightmare 46. So here is the supercharger. We are really excited for it. It says it runs around six pounds. And then the other thing that we're gonna be installing today is this. This is the dual AFR kit. This is dual because we have banks one and bank two. Uh, they don't cross over. There's not a Y into a single exhaust yet on both of these cars. So we're gonna be running this, same one that we put in my race car and I was happy enough with it that I bought another one. The other thing that we'll be doing today is I'm gonna be removing the air intake, so the intake manifold. You don't actually have to do that to install this kit. I've got the original CCV system in there and that needs to be removed. It's just, because we're running a catch can, it's just kind of sitting in there and I had chopped some of the things off of it. So we'll make sure to run the fuel regulator onto boost now that it's not vacuum anymore. And so where all your fuel regulator uh, connections for your vacuum used to be on the driver's side, ours is gonna be over here on the passenger side. For the most part, this will be a fairly side-by-side -side install to the instructions. There'll just be a few things that are different on this car. So let's get the hood popped and then we'll start this install. So the first thing we'll be removing is this air intake and then we'll be doing the, the manifold there. Uh, I am not gonna need this air intake anymore, so if any of you are interested, let me know. I might do a giveaway. I might give it away to somebody. It is an AFE air intake, so it wasn't a cheap one, but yeah, that's gotta go, and we won't be using it anymore. So the intake manifold is now off. I am not gonna be completely removing it because uh, I did do some solid mounted things. As you can see here, this is one of those crimp connector, the single use ones. And uh, that one goes down and there's a couple others that are here that are permanent. So I basically I'd have to cut them off and then redo them. So I'm not gonna do that because the only reason I needed this up was to be able to get this old CCV system out of here. So in the instructions, what you'll do is you'll cap this one off, just like we did with, you can see it's already capped off. You do that with the catch can system that we installed. You'll cap that one off and you'll save this S tube right here and you'll actually roll it over and use it for the rest of your kit. The rest of the CCV system doesn't need to be in here with the catch can, so all of this right here will be removed. I pulled the dipstick out. Uh, this is what the dipstick looks like. We talked about this too, so you'll just cap that off. Anyways, I'll have the link to that up here so that if anybody wants to see that video first, that way you're not super confused. Because if you're installing the VF engineering kit and you're watching this video, it's gonna be a little bit confusing because there are things that we're not doing. The next thing I need to do is, I guess this coolant pipe has to come off, which kind of sucks because you'll lose a bunch of coolant. Because this coolant hose is at the top of the system, you don't have to like uh, bleed it out. So we're going to pull coolant out of here as best we can, and we'll pop this hose off. We'll remove the electric fan. And then I believe one of these cables here has to be extended. And luckily enough, the use kit that my buddy gave me, he actually just included that um, extension kit. So I'm not sure exactly where that's at here. There's your MAF extension wires. So we're gonna have to be doing that as well because it puts the intake, it puts the mass airflow sensor quite a bit further away. Um, here is the other hose. I guess this is slightly different than it used to be. Um, here is the power steering extension hose that they talk about, charge piping. So yeah, um, 
None of that's none of this is super crazy. There's a belt. The majority of what we'll be doing the rest of the day is installing the kit and making sure that the belt doesn't have any issues clearing everything. So yeah, let's get this electric fan out, get this hose off, and then we'll continue our install. So this is something that we've done in the past is grind these tabs down. Um, they don't need to be all the way back, but if you can, that's that's fine. Uh, but that allows you to slide the boot on further. This is your throttle body. Uh, so we're gonna smooth that out just a little bit more. And then one other thing that I'm gonna talk about is cutting this off. So that gets in the way of this intake piece here. So this will be your intake and then it charges and then this will be your positive side. So this will be your vacuum and then this will be your boost side. So your vacuum, anytime you need any vacuum supply, there it is right there on the end. And I think it's this side here. Uh, I'm gonna put some Teflon tape in this. You wanna make sure that if you can, you'll have all these connectors be, well, preferably they'd be these crimp connectors, but if you can't, if they need to be a hose clamp that's fine too i did find out this coupler here the silicone coupler that goes from this side to the supercharger i do not have which isn't a big deal it's not the funnest thing in the world to have to wait but we're already waiting for our injectors so i'm gonna get everything else done today so that when that coupler comes i just slap it on and when the injectors come i can just pop those in the intake goes down into here so we'll make sure to get enough room down behind the driver's side headlight i went over this in a previous video. Cut these off, use the permanent clamps every chance you get, use Teflon, so the, uh, you're not getting any uh, boost leaks or vacuum leaks. And then one other thing I wanted to show that not a lot of people online showed was how I was able to set this up. On the back side of this, there is a washer that's a little bit funny looking and it interlocks with it perfectly. So you'll put that in between there and that gives you the proper spacing so that these are the same. And I believe I moved the bolt that went into the bottom of the alternator up to here and then the one that was in here i think is just left over um yeah right here you're not going to use this one so the bottom goes to the top theirs goes into here which fits perfectly there is a spacer back behind this so it's like a it's probably like a one inch spacer it's about that big around it goes back behind there you'll pull this bolt out which is for the oil filter housing and then you'll put in one of their bolts. This is longer to compensate for this piece. Let me get some light in there. So that's longer to compensate for that. Um, you do have to modify this guy here. This is your power steering filter bracket. So we'll have to cut one. I don't know which one it is, but we'll cut one of those off and then we'll cut this guy off as well. And we'll make sure that it doesn't look like it's a big mess. It's gonna be basically covered by this. We don't wanna make a big mess, so. Yes, we'll get all that done. So as of right now, the only thing that's truly left is to find that coupler here. I wasn't able to hook this one in all the way because I'm worried that because this sits over top that I'd have to take it off anyways. Um, we ground off those tabs on the throttle body. And the other thing that you wanna do when you are tightening these up is you wanna make sure that your bands are somewhere where you can get at them. Because if you tighten this up with the bands upside down, when you go to take it back off again, it's gonna be a huge pain in the butt. So the intake control valve is right here. And I think, the, I, think I can do them separate. I think I can put this one on first, then install this and hook that one up. Once we're to the point where we've got this intake piece here, um, we're really getting close to being put back together and running. Um, so yeah, as of tonight, that's where we are. 
Uh, we're about six hours in right now of like actual working. The instructions for this were really, really bad. Uh, they didn't tell you exactly where everything went and that's why I was going over a lot of the bolts that were up here and some of the other things that are going on. So I'll keep everybody updated. All the things that are difficult, off topic, or they don't show in the instructions, I'll make sure to show everybody so that we're not getting lost. So everything is now completely installed. So I'm not sure how much we discussed during the install. It did take us um, probably about 12 hours total over the span of a couple of days. I was hoping that this wouldn't be as complicated as my supercharger. It, it really wasn't. Uh, there was just a few things where this was a used kit. The instructions weren't very clear. And uh, I just wanna go over something real quick here. So the hardest thing about this install, honestly, is just getting all the charge piping, the intake and everything like that fitted up. So you can see here, this is at a bit of an angle. I'm probably gonna buy a longer coupler just so that I feel safer. Cause right now it's just, it's holding on by like a quarter of an inch, which should be plenty cause it is beveled on the ends, but you don't want to put that kind of stuff up to chance. Cause if you blow that off, it's not gonna destroy your engine, but it's not good either. Especially if you're like on a road trip or something. So. I'm gonna get a longer one of these. Um, the two that go into the idler control valve and into the throttle body, those are difficult to get on because you have to do them both at the same time. So we're gonna end our video here. Uh, this is part one, part two. We're gonna be starting the car. We're getting really close to starting and we'll be talking about the tune. We're gonna have RevMatch do all the tuning for this. And yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, we're hoping that this supercharger can push this car to around 300 or so. So thanks everybody so much for watching. We'll see everybody in the next video.